My mystery used to say, you know, uh, uh, that horses were, were trained. They just uh, teach us the way they like to be ridden. You can train a horse out of fear, any animal actually, out of anything you want. You can train him with love, you can train him with fear, you can train him with all the nuances be between those, and you can um, train them by pain. Uh, you can train them all sorts of ways. If you have a good relation with your horse, everything is going to be easy. You need to have a, a, what I would call an open attitude, meaning that sometimes your horse is going to, to jump up and down a little, little too strong, sometimes they are going to be more playful than other times. It's part of the, part of the day. Uh, sometimes they are a little lazy, therefore you need to be a little stronger and say, go on now, uh, you know. You, you need to adapt every day to what he's going to tell you. Adapt your thinking to what you have. Very much like when you go to the office in the morning and say, and if the boss is grumpy, well, you are going to act very differently than he's friendly. Dressage has that name of, of it is so hard to do things because instead of being careful about the mental and the physical attitude of the horse to put him both together well in order for the horse to give you the movement, uh, man has that sort of thinking that the horse should look this way and now we are going to do it. Well, if the horse is not mentally or physically ready to do it, he's not going to do it. Or it's going to be not pretty. And that's going to be very hard to force a horse to do something when he's wrong in his mind and his body. It's very hard. That's why so few horses make it. Well, that's not true. A lot of horses make it if you just attach yourself to the most important part, which is, is the horse okay? Does he want to do that with me? And if he said yes, well, you progressively, systematically work or play. And it is magical. Life is magical. Uh, things happen in life that you don't expect. And generally the best thing happens when you don't expect them. Sophistication during the time of the, of the competition, during the five, seven minutes of the test, a rider could fake it, as I say. There's no better teacher than the horse it, itself. And when they are trained properly, if something happened wrong, the, the rider does something a little wrong, the horse would stop and say, hey, I don't function that way. Too often dressage is presented as, a, as an old folks kind of a thing when you can't jump anymore, you do dressage, okay? A little bit like when uh, your horse is not a good jumper, then he will do dressage. We are kind of the poor parents of, uh, of, the, of the rider um, establishment. But more and more young people now are interested into dressage because they find it fascinating to have a that kind of a mental expansion that, they, that the kids are natural to, uh, to do for them. And they, they enjoyed the dressage very, very much so. Therefore, it's not as much as it used to be an old folks kind of discipline. We have more and more people coming saying that the dressage they had seen, if they thought that's all dressage was, they wouldn't do it because it wasn't pleasant, it wasn't aesthetic to look at, and they felt the horses being were unhappy and very mechanical-like. Basically, dressage just means training, and um, it's why it's, it's so important for any horse. And when I mean any horse, we couldn't go from the driving to the western, to the jumping, to the three-day eventing, of course, which is a nothing to the dressage horse. That they, I mean, I would go as far as saying that even a, a race horse needs some dressage because it's basic training, which is basic relationship between a, a, a man and a horse. If you walk in the, in the river to wet your feet, you're not going to find gold. If you know there's gold in the river, you want to find gold. Therefore, you have to expect those magical moments. And those magical moments come to you if you expect them.